मैम वी आर लाइव so hello everyone this is good evening in india and we see in the registration form we have people from almost all over the world like from south america north america from uh, from uganda and kenya from uh, in the neighboring state countries in india from spain and other countries so i think a lot of uh, excitement because you are the speaker today and uh, you bring so much of experience and wisdom regarding face therapy so hello everybody thank you for joining and let me have the opportunity to um, welcome dr nazia and also give a brief introduction uh, about her she is very well known in the field of face therapy so dr nazia is she represents a world renowned uh, g ilyava institute of bacteriophages microbiology and virology which is headquartered in tbilisi georgia she is currently the director of ilyava institute and she is the president of ilyava foundation which is a collection of commercial spin off several commercial spin offs she oversees coordinates and manages the research directions and program of the institute her scientific background is in microbiology and molecular biology and uh, which in, which she puts into bacteriophage research and applications uh, dr bazia is the author or co-author of more than 80 scientific papers and she has served as a manager and a leading scientist of number of scientific research projects she is serving as a project and paper reviewer for national and international funding agencies and several scientific journals mm -hmm. thank you so much dr mzia for joining us and taking time out i know that december is a very busy time for you but mm -hmm. still so thank you very much for on behalf of all of us this series i'll just take a minute to tell you um, this is a series uh, organized by international bacteriophage research consortium and um, open source pharma foundation and the indian phage society called society for bacteriophage research and therapy so uh, we welcome you and uh, you may start your presentation please and the format is that after your presentation uh, uh participants first of all thank you very much for invitation uh thanks to the consortium also to the indian association for phage study and application and therapy so it's really my great honor to present about our experience uh, georgia's and uh, mainly the Eliyama institute's experience of course i would love and i would be uh, glad to meet you on face it would be really very nice but uh, unfortunately this is uh, <laughs> this was not possible so and uh, i i would be uh, greeting all my uh, friends and colleagues and partners who are um, attending the presentation so let me very briefly give you some uh, overview of who we are what we are doing but i will start from the past so as you might know, the discovery of the phage is uh, connecting to several people, but uh, several scientists. But first of all, it was Felix Durrell in 1917 who described the phenomenon. He was French Canadian, was working at the Institute Pasteur. And he was the scientist who used the phage preparation as a therapeutic agent to treat dysentery in 12 years old boy. And it was kind of first clinical application of bacteriophage. A couple of, uh, years of la later, we have first uh, scientific publication on phage therapy. And 19, from 1927, um, uh, there was the first mass application of phages against cholera. Again, it was led by Felix Durrell in India. So, and then uh, it was developed in different countries. The, uh, first of all, in Europe, it was in France, at the Institute Pasteur, then in Germany. Of course, in the United States, several companies were working on phages, were producing phages for human and also animal protection. Now, briefly about the Eliava Institute. So the Eliava Institute was established on the base of the already um, established and existing Institute of Bacteriology, which was really very important in the region because it was serving kind of um, uh, big parts of, um, of course, our neighboring countries, also part of uh, Turkey, also Iran, uh, North Caucasian uh, countries. 
And the director of this institute was Georgian, very young scientist and microbiologist and doctor Georgi Eliava. Uh, so Soviet government sent Georgi uh, to Institute Pasteur for the vaccine development, where he met uh, with Felix Durel, who was already working on bacteriophages. So these two scientists became very close friends. Eliava started to work on phages. He, he, he was trying to prove the concept phenomena of bacteriophages by experiments. So later he invited Felix Durel to Tbilisi uh, in his institute, Institute of Bacteriology. Uh, Durel liked the place very much. And these two scientists decided to create a world center of phage research and application. Uh, so Durell was working here. He has been here um, several times. He had his own laboratory here. But unfortunately, due to some unfavorable political situation, Georgi Elia was uh, arrested and then executed, and Durell never came back again to Georgia. Also, the institute developed uh, developed as a one of the strongest uh, one of the strongest uh, places uh, and scientific research centers in the former Soviet Union. Uh, so the institute had uh, two parts: scientific part and production facility. So the institute was producing mainly biological products, including sera for treatment and identification for some pathogens, also uh, diagnosticums for diagnostic purposes, also vaccines, including those that were against um, infections caused by um, uh, the most dangerous pathogens. But the mainstream, of course, it was bacteriophages for treatment and prophylactic purposes of different uh, bacterial infections. So let me very uh, briefly give you some very uh, specific features of uh, bacteriophages. Yes, they are the most abundant organisms on the earth uh, and they are, uh, they are global players in the to sustain ecological balance in nature. Very interesting, the, our human body normal microflora includes phages and they are participated in the very uh, special and very important um, processes, but we do not know the number of bacteriophages in our bodies. They are quite diverse, uh, morphologically they are quite different. Uh, also functioning, depending on their functions, there are two types, temperate phages, which are incorporated in the host bacterial chromosome, and they are giving um, and gaining some features, specific uh, features to the host bacteria, and also lytic phages, which are causing um, uh, killing of the host bacteria, bacteria in any circumstances. So, and this feature, this lysis, specific lysis, is very important um, uh, property of the bacteriophages. Very important that there is a no side or very minor uh, side effect uh, associated with the phage application in case of different uh, bacterial infections. Of course, they are non-toxic. Uh, uh, there is possibility, of course, to develop phage resistance that can be avoided with the different uh, uh, options. And also, very interesting, they are compatible with the other therapies. Would it be vaccines or under other antibacterials or even antibiotics, So, the, which is very, very important. So as I mentioned, uh, many years already we are using phages for treatment and pro prophylactic purposes. Actually, this year we uh, celebrated our 100 years of anniversary of our institute with a very important uh, and very interesting uh, conference, the virus of microbes. Maybe some of them already attended <laughs> attended this our conference. So we have very nice library where we are collecting the you know, books and journals uh, describing uh, that describe the results of the clinical application of the phages. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, we could compile and translate the part of the publications in English, and we published uh, books. Uh, twice, it's uh, two books, 
And it's really very interesting observation you can find in the uh, in these periodicals and publications. So the main conclusions are that the phages, if they work, they work very very uh, successfully. So it's a, almost ninety five percent of efficacy. In some uh, bacterial infections, there is a rapid improvement during first uh, week. Of course, there is no side effects uh, mentioned or relapsed cases. Uh, phages have kind of prophylactic effect and uh, several uh, publications describe the reduction of development of diseases uh, about three or six times. Again, it has uh, the phages triggering the non-specific uh, immunity. And um, even in the uh, groups which were uh, given the phages, there were milder uh, development of the disease. And of course, um, it, they're describing redu reduced hospital days. Of course, there are major errors also found in those publications because when they are describing the efficacy of the phages, very often it's a different number of the patients in the so-called experimental group and also in control group. Uh, there was no, there is no publication that includes the placebo because it was restricted in that country. And... Um, uh, many times, I mean, many uh, publications describe different methodological approaches, different schemes, different titers of phage, different doses, and also duration of treatment. In most of the cases, there was no control groups. And uh, some, of course, its uh, results are not statistically reliable. Uh, anyway, the phages, as I mentioned, the phage application has the long history. In the 20s or 30s, uh, the phages have been used in surgery very effectively. Uh, in the different, uh, during the First World War, uh, the Second World War, uh, they were using phages for different um, infections caused by staph or even anaerobic clostridium perfusions. Uh, phages have been used for gastrointestinal infections, the dysentery or salmonellosis, typhoid fever. From 40s and 50s, the, the doctors start, the, um, uh, started to use it for urological infections and respiratory infections. Phages uh, were um, used in different medicinal forms, in liquid like orally or topical application, also subcutaneously and uh, by inter uh, interdermal applications. And uh, in 1974 at our institute, um, it was developed a special methodology to use phage intravenously. And they started to use phages intravenously uh, since 1980. So I would like just to give the one very small example what, uh, about the scale of the application of phages, uh, in this case, for prophylaxis. So you know, the first uh, prophylactic application of phages um, uh, happened in 1930 in Donbas region. And the Mainly the people were using the uh, phages for prophylactic purposes for intestine, gastrointestinal problems. So it's the one publication from 1978 which describes phage application in different uh, towns, cities, 93. Uh, so in 50, they were giving phages to the food and dairy production personnel and also kindergarten teachers, also children. Um, so you can see the number of the children, about 20,000, and they were, uh, they were comparing the development, development or rate of development of the disease in 43 different <laughs> cities. And then uh, they were describing the uh, uh, rate of development um, of infection decreased by 30 or 60 percent in different um, in different towns. So I would like also to mention um, a very successful preparation. It was staphylococcal uh, bacteriophage for intravenous application. 
And in 80s, uh, it was the big clinical trial. So this was the biggest clinical trial on 653 patients with a different kind of acute and also chronic infections, uh, so including sepsis, pulmonary infections, septicemia, osteomyelitis, um, uh, deep wounds, and um, uh, infertility problems in women. So the trials have been performed in five different um, uh, institutes and also clinics in Moscow and in Tbilisi also. And the main um, finding of these clinical trials was that there was no side effects. It was described only in a couple of patients, just increasing a little bit of fever. Uh, and the best clinical efficacy was achieved with the simultaneous application of bacteriophage, the stockphage, with the other antibacterials, mainly antibiotics. So now what we are doing now at our institute, the, of course, the LIAVA is the main scientific research institute, which is focus, which focuses its activity in different directions. But the main direction is to identify, to study the causative agents of the infection, bacterial strains, uh, also find out the mechanism of development of antibiotic resistance and phage resistance. But the second very important um, direction for us to create the phage-based remedies um, against bacterial infections of human, uh, of course, human, human health, also animal health, animal protection, plant protection, and environmental decontamination. Uh, the main asset of the one of the main assets, I would say, the, uh, is that uh, we have the biggest collection of the bacterial strains in bacteriophages. Now we have mostly the mixture of the phages and also individual isolates. Uh, of course, that uh, we uh, do not characterize the whole collection, but um, most of the phages which we are uh, using for therapeutic uh, purposes are very well studied and characterized. So what we have now, uh, you know, based on our uh, our uh, goals to for sustainable development uh, with the help of our partners from the mainly the United States, we created so-called kind of consortium. So we have the Liava Institute, which is the scientific uh, research institute. We have non-for-profit foundation, Liava Foundation, and we established several spin-off companies. We have our production facility, Liava Biopreparations. We have our diagnostic center, uh, our phage therapy center, uh, where we are treating patients. We have uh, our pharmacy, and we have also a company trying to use phages for the contamination of medical settings. So our diagnostic center, it provides the just uh, normal diagnostic service, but um, in comparison with the other centers, we are using phages. Um, uh, we are doing antibiotic and phage susceptibility tests in order to find out which uh, phage to select, which phage should we use for uh, for treatment of um, different patients. We have our pharmacy, it has special license to, uh, to prepare phages for uh, individual, individual use of, or personalized use. Uh, our production facility, uh, by preparations, we are producing six different products right now. So five out of six are mixture of different phages. And we have only one staphylococcal monophage, uh, which I mentioned already. It's almost the same as we were producing in uh, 80s, but for intravenous application. But now we are using it only locally and very well purified um, and very still very effective preparation. So, and last, it's uh, our phage therapy center. It's a small outpatient clinic. We have different um, directions of doctors. Um, and in case we have patient and we do need some additional care, so we have memorandums uh, with the different clinics, bigger clinics, and we are taking care of, of our patients there as well. 
So what we are treating, mainly uh, the uh, different infectious diseases of different uh, human body and uh, different systems, would it be urological problems or gynecological pro problems, diabetic, uh, I mean, surgical infections, including diabetic ulcers and uh, chronic wounds, prosthetic associated infections. We're using phages for gastrointestinal tract diseases, different kind of origins, uh, also uh, using phages with the respiratory systems, including cystic fibrosis, which is the genetic disorder, uh, of course, for the skin and soft tissue diseases. So we have been treated also using phages in very, uh, very difficult complications, uh, again, during Crohn's disease. Uh, so it's against secondary infections in those patients who have some uh, life-threatening uh, conditions with the, uh, for example, Netherton syndrome or Cartagener syndrome and uh, bronchoectasis and et cetera, et cetera. So we are talking mainly uh, the outpatients, outpatients who have acute or long-standing several years of chronic infections. So, of course, we are offering our service, 70% of uh, our patients are Georgian population. So, again, we are using phages for different um, infectious complications. Uh, but also together with the Georgian population, we are offering our service to our international patients and geography is really very wide. Uh, so during last uh, eight years, we had uh, almost 3,000 patients, more. Yeah, this is only foreign patients coming to us from 83 different countries. So most of the patients are coming, uh, of course, from Europe. But um, again, I would say that uh, geography is really very wide. Uh, we we have patients from different, uh, con all uh, from every continent and also different countries. So the most of the uh, uh, infectious complications we have from the uh, international patients are chronic infections against mostly from uh, I can say that from urinary tract infections, also the chronic uh, surgical infections, um, uh, also sinusitis. Uh, the intestinal problems, including irritable bowel syndrome and others as well. So I mentioned that in some cases when uh, our fixed products or ready to use products do not work, we are making, we are preparing uh, so-called autophages for individual and personalized using. And uh, sometimes the uh, people with the patients with the chronic infections, they are requesting second and uh, very rare this is three, three times the same, pa uh, same pages, but um, they are really very effective because it's a customized and it's prepared for individual patient use. So how it works in general. So patients contact us and they're finding us because you can imagine these are uh, quite desperate uh, patients. They uh, try different approaches, nothing work, and then they're coming to us. Also, we had uh, several documentary films and uh, programs in different countries, and also even patients have special blogs, the patients who have been treated at, in our center, and also we have patients um, via their doctor's uh, recommendation, which is really very important for us. So we are asking, when the patient uh, communicating with us, so we we are asking to, to send the description of their medical status, uh, what is the bacterial disease. Also, we are uh, doctors are reviewing uh, patients' history. Uh, also, what kind of uh, laboratory all instrumental investigations have been done. And then if doctors decide that their patients are eligible to uh, for treatment, then we are asking to send the clinical samples to us. Uh, then we uh, identify the pathogen. We are trying to select which phage can be uh, used in, in this specific uh, case um, using the standard so-called uh, fixed um, phage preparation, which I already mentioned, the six. And in if this um, 
standard uh, preparations do not work, then we are uh, applying to our big collection in order to find uh, find um, uh, active phage and then prepare the uh, phage preparation for those patients. Of course, um, when the patient uh, is okay. coming page preparation for those patients. Of course, um, when the patient uh, is coming, I'm sorry, what is it? Of course, um, when the patient uh, is coming, I'm sorry, what is it? Of course, um, when the patient uh, is coming, sorry, what is it? Oh, not <laughs> Can I continue? I'm sorry, it's, it was so. Uh, uh, just check, Ritu, if somebody's on, unmuted. Right. Yes, please. I Checking, ma'am. Uh, there's no one. Okay. Well, I think right now it looks fine. Okay, may I continue? Yes, yes, please. <clears throat> yes, yes Mazia, please continue. Okay, okay, sorry. So, um, and then uh, if they, uh, when patient comes, of course, we provide all kind of necessary diagnostic service, would it be um, additional blood tests or uh, some in instrumental investigation, uh, for example, X-ray or CAT scan, or we have everything on place. And of course, we have different um, fields of experts here um, to, to discuss about case and uh, uh, dosage and all kind of procedures which uh, we should take. Uh, for the patients and use for the patients. Uh, uh, again, if the standard pay, uh, standard treatment or standard uh, phages work, we can uh, use it. But if in case that we have to prepare custom prepar preparation for personalized uh, use, it will take maximum six or eight weeks. Um, and then we have about two weeks of quality uh, quality assurance, quality control. Uh, so how we evaluate the improvement, of course, with the uh, subjective uh, criteria, um, with the evaluation of their uh, general conditions, uh, with elimination of the symptoms, but also objective criteria, uh, which is um, depending on the infectious diseases uh, doctors are evaluating with the temperature or uh, uh, improvement of lung uh, function or spirometry or whatever, or uh, for example, the size of wounds, and et cetera. And of course, with the laboratory testing. So I was thinking what kind of cases I should report to you. And there are so many and so interesting. So I, I compiled some, several of them. So first of all, it's a irritable bowel syndrome, which is really very interesting, the disorder. Uh, uh, Doctors and scientists still have a lot of questions of development of this uh, pathology. Uh, sometimes it's uh, associated with the pathogen, pathogenic bacterial strain, but sometimes not. But the manifestation is the bacterial overgrow in the small intestine. So uh, we had uh, several patients with this. Um, uh, it's a it's a lot of uh, scientific research going on right now, uh, not only with the IBM. Yes, but in general, uh, finding finding the role of the phage in the normal microbiomes and uh, uh, with the metagenomics and other approaches, and uh, I, I hope that uh, we will have more information about development of this uh, disease very soon. So we have had quite a lot of uh, patients with this um, disorder. In so several patients had the pathogenic bacteria, including staph or enterococcus of pseudomonas arginosa. And in most of the cases, we have been using the standard fixed products for those. Uh, sometimes the two phage preparations in combination. So in 85%, we had the complete eradication of these pathogens. Uh, we had clinical improvement in 75% of patients, and in 15%, we, we did not have any elimination. But in general, it's a 
uh, most of the in, in uh, I will uh, I will try to mention later also with the surgical uh, infections, but sometimes you do not have the the, the inhibition of the uh, or decreasing of pathogenic uh, bacteria in concentration, but the health status is much better. So uh, finally, we decided that yes, we can use phages in uh, in case of bacterial overgrowth. Also, uh, phage has some indirect uh, influence of the microbiota, and uh, really they are quite effective uh, uh, with the phages are effective with the conventional or standard therapy for IBS. Uh, other uh, complication which I would like to mention is the cystic fibrosis, which is genetic disorder. And of course, you cannot eliminate problem uh, completely, but... Um, what we can do that we can diminish the uh, bacterial uh, tighter concentration uh, and their quality of life uh, really uh, improves. So in 73% of our patients, we had uh, improvement of the symptoms. And in those uh, where we had improvement, the oxygen saturation increases up to 95%. And the main advantage of the phage treatment is that um, uh, we could minimize the necessity of using of antibacterials and also the, uh, they have the prolonged remission period uh, which is really very very important for them we have a couple of patients um, uh, i remember from france and germany as well where we had uh, no antibiotic it wasn't it, it is not necessary to give the antibiotics almost two years which is really very high achievement in those uh, patients so I also would like to mention bronchoectasis, which is also uh, quite in uh, complicated cases. In total, we had 236 patients uh, with the, those public, uh, uh, complication. We had complete eradication of the pathogen only in three patients, but the improvement of the symptoms in more than 180 patients yeah, and uh, at least there was no uh, worsening situation uh, in any of the patients. Uh, and now I would like to uh, focus on the surgical uh, surgical infections, uh, just one example, male from 68 years old, old um, uh, the uh, patient had the transplantation of the, uh, actually it was graft surgery, it's not transplantation, uh, due to the carcinoma, the, uh, the uh, grafts, uh, for the, they removed the larynx um, uh, and put it, uh, uh, transplanted on the other place and which was uh, actually infected that they could not have any antibiotic to use to against bacterial uh, infection. Um, when we checked uh, analysis of bacteriology, it was Pseudomonas aeruginosa multidrug resistant. Uh, so phage was used uh, locally uh, and also uh, orally as well, the same phage. And uh, 20 days. Um, uh, then a uh, uh, patient had uh, about two weeks uh, phage-free period, and the same treatment was um, uh, continued for uh, 20 days. Even after initial treatment, the uh, tissue started to regenerate, and the yeah, this is the final after uh, second round of treatment, uh, complete uh, eradication of the problem. Uh, another uh, case, which is recent actually, um, so uh, person, this is Georgian patient, uh, uh, he developed infection on the medial surface uh, of tibia after the accident and um, uh, infection was caused uh, by staph aureus and pseudomonas arginosa. And they uh, mainly they we, uh, used the standard fixed products uh, orally and locally as a cream uh, and uh, uh, on the 21st day, uh, the um, wound was completely closed. Uh, 
Another case I just would like to mention, it's a urinary tract infection in 66 years old person. A patient came to us from the U.S. Again, this is a recent case. A uh, patient was uh, diagnosed with the uh, chronic bacterial prostatitis, uh, and the main causative agent was E. coli, ASBL. Uh, of course, they were using antibiotics, including the IV antibiotics. Uh, they were changing antibiotics, but um, there was no uh, improvement. Patient um, uh, applied to us in March 2023. We checked again E. coli, and uh, it was still the same pathogen, and uh, none of the fixed product was working uh, against those uh, pat uh, this pathogen, and we prepared custom phage preparation for this patient. Uh, patient arrived, and we started treatment, and uh, together in combination with the antibiotics. And uh, after two types, two rounds of treatment, um, we reached the complete eradication of the um, E. coli ESBL. Um, and test was confirmed in the U.S. as well. And uh, time by time, we are checking. Actually, November, December, there is no clinical manifestation um, still in this patient. Um, so during the, in mainly the patients, international patients are coming directly to our center, but during the COVID where it was impossible to, to travel, we developed so-called um, distance treatment. So our doctors providing online consulting using the telemedicine and um, we have quite a good results um, uh, providing this distance treatment. I would like to mention one of it, a person from Germany, uh, following the surgery in 2020, uh, patient developed the uh, quite an infection and open fistulas. Uh, they could not use any antibiotics uh, uh, because it was uh, multidrug resistant. And uh, two pathogens, actually, uh, it was proteus. We asked them, the patient could not come to our center. We asked uh, him to send us uh, clinical samples to uh, bacteria was identified, proteus mirabilis and aureus. And uh, in this case, commercial phages showed activity. So we sent the uh, we sent the phages to the patients and uh, they were using it there uh, on site. Uh, so 20 milliliters uh, directly to the infectious cavity, also uh, for uh, 15 days, then uh, patient has two week um, phage free period. And uh, again, the procedure was uh, twice repeated. And the, uh, you, you can see the uh, picture of the third uh, course of treatment, also successful case. So, and finally, I would like to mention that there are two different scenarios to use the phages, to, to use uh, type of phages. First of all, it's a ready to use fixed phage products. Uh, you know that the phages are not still approved uh, as a medicinal or pharmaceutical agent in the countries. Also, the many countries are already moving in, in that directions including Europe and the U.S. also. And, um, of course, there are challenges associated with the both uh, scenarios. The, first of all, um, uh, the good product, which works well, it contains different <laughs> components, phage components, different uh, the quite a mixture of the phage preparation. Mm, uh, GMP production is needed, which is also, also very uh, very expensive and uh, technically is, is associated uh, so with several problems. In order to approve phages as a pharmaceuticals, there are clinical trials needed, of course. Now, for the personalized approach, uh, uh, the main challenge is that um, uh, it's absolutely necessary to have experienced personal for phage selection because you cannot use any phage which you can isolate from the environment you know, for the patient. Um, of course, it's a very important uh, step is that you should know how to train your, your phage in order to use it more successfully. 
uh, very important challenge is that you have to approve a lot of uh, a high number of the phages legally, which is also very difficult. <laughs> and um, magistral phage, which is uh, used currently in Belgium, for example, uh, it uh, takes responsibility, it gives the responsibility to doctor or pharmacist, which is in several cases, it's not so easy. So this is all what I would like to share with you. And uh, I would be, thank you very much for attention. And uh, I would be happy to um, take your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mazia. This was excellent. Uh, in a very short mm -hmm. time, covered almost everything. And um, I think most of us perhaps did not know the whole spectrum of activities that you do besides uh, we knew all only about phage therapy so thank you very much for this wonderful talk and uh, very well uh, summarized mm -hmm. so um uh, before i open the open for others to question i have just a simple one like now that we say it's century two like we started this is the second century of phage therapy mm -hmm. or in yeah. Yava. So, so now that uh, we started when we did not even know what phages look like and now that we have such cutting edge technologies in 21st century. So how mm -hmm. do you think, uh, which of the technologies do you think can benefit phage research and therapy the most? Uh, that's my question. And second mm -hmm. question was that, what do you, where do you source your phages from? What kind of diversity do they have in your yeah. preparation? Okay. Yeah, thank you for the questions. Of course, um, before 40s, you know, I didn't mention the phages uh, were, were very, uh, very highly... I'm sorry, there is something which is... Oh. Somebody has <laughs> unmuted. It's, it's echo. Yes, so, I'm checking. Uh, yes, I'm checking. It's fine now. Okay. So they were very well, um, uh, very rap rapidly spreading because they were using this antibacterial for any kind of infections, would it be viral or fungal? And, you know, it was uh, poor understanding. I'm, I'm talking about before 40s, before uh, discovery of the antibiotics, because the people were thinking that, oh, it's in some antibacterials and it is possible to use for any kind of infections. Of course, uh, it was poor understanding of phage biology and uh, and it led of some misunderstanding of the uh, phage efficacy. Uh, but then later, you know, we uh, we learned a lot about phage biology. We learned uh, which kind of phages, um, uh, what kind of main criteria the phage should meet in order to have more success in patients, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, so uh, regarding uh, the, if I, I, I don't know if I uh, answered your question, first question, but the second uh, question, of course, the main source of our phages is environment. Uh, and you know it's ecological balance you have many phages where you have many bacteria so uh, because ecologically they live to, uh, together so uh, would it be soil samples or uh, water samples or sewage after of course filtration uh, sewage system or different kind even the sometimes the patient's uh, samples so different sources of isolation of phages now I'll take mm -hmm. questions from uh, the chat, which uh, the participants have written. <coughs> Hello, Dr. Rama, with great respect. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> can I, uh, Urmi, I will just say a few words. Yes, please, sure. Uh, thank you, Mazia. It was wonderful presentation. And I can say it gives so much of confidence to everyone who is working in India that it works, you know. And uh, <laughs> my Personal note, uh, I would like to convey to all the participants here that I have personally visited Ilyava Institute and seen the patient being treated, especially a case of Nethaden syndrome and also another case where there was a big fistula. So before I went, I had so many doubts, so many queries in my mind that whether this, um, uh, I mean, what is this phages and whether they will be effective and what can be the side effects and things like that. But they are given so comfortably and after talking to the patient's uh, mother, the, the boy who was uh, getting treatment, 
uh, I could really get so much of confidence and I felt, yes, this is doable. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate the kind of effort this institute is making, helping so many patients uh, world over that I think it's a commendable job to uh, continue for so many years and we are really seeking You have lost you. Okay, I see. Hello, ma'am, you are uh, not audible. Uh, Swati, you are on mute. I think if you're speaking to us, you're on mute. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. I'm, I'm saying that it is so wonderful to have you and uh, everyone here is looking for collaborations and support from your institute so that we can really take this... Um, uh, face therapy to even to common people whosoever deserve to have it and uh, we are very happy to have you here congratulations for wonderful talk thank you so much thank you thank you dr amap thank you very much and uh, you know i i mentioned several times during your visit and i would like to mention now that the liava is ready for collaboration we would like love to to have your people here for training purposes or or even brainstorming what we can do in your country so we would be very very happy for a collaboration thank you very much for your nice thank word you. thank you Professor Indrani, ma'am, Indrani, ma'am, you are you are asking a question. Before you are on mute, Ritu, can you unmute him? Unmute, ma'am. Yes, she can unmute herself. Thank Achai. you, thank you. Uh, yes, I thought I put it in the chat box because many people would like to ask question and. Uh, we can see that uh, Urmi has been doing excellent job of taking up all the questions even in the previous presentation. So Dr. Elaviat, uh, sorry, your institute has become synonymous with your name for me. So thank <laughs> you for the excellent presentation. And I was just wondering, uh, have you been at the institute looking at phages for helicobacter pylori? I'm at Oxford at the moment, and that is why you can see all the sun shining at this moment after a cold winter. Okay, so do you have for Helicobacter pylori? No, actually, we never. Yeah, thank you for the question, but we never tried, you know. We had some, uh, maybe 20 years ago, some interest coming from the surgeons, you know, the uh, but gastroenterologists, but we never tried even because they had problem with the cultivation of bacteria. So we do not have phages and even have not been tried to, to isolate some, yeah. Because no. these organisms that have a propensity to have the yeah. patient uh, develop carcinoma in the long run uh, yeah. would probably uh, be very benefited if you had it and oral administration would probably help. And having mm -hmm. said that, um, I don't know with the organisms that are microaerophilic, like uh, Helicobacter, Boritella, and others like Brucella. I don't know how much success yeah. you yeah. would have with phage therapy for these organisms. So in yeah. your experience. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, just uh, I would like to add that um, we have very nice uh, phages actually for bacteroides, which is also causative agent of cancer in the small intestine. And this is our new work. And uh, actually today, my young scientists have the doctoral thesis, defense of the doctoral thesis. I could not go there. But um, so we are kind of going in that direction to isolate phages for this uh, different pathogens. If as for microfiles, yes, we had very nice works and uh, for Brucella, uh, but mainly we have very typing scam of phages, phage typing, and mainly it is used for typing for diagnostic purposes, not for treatment, because it is intracellular pathogen and you cannot use it for treatment. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. It's very You're kind. Very I'd like to thank Dr. Urmi for uh, organizing this uh, excellent uh, talk.
talk by you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Dr. Rama has visited and she has already explained. So it's really like good to believe everything that you said because we have had our own senior scientists visit your institute. My husband yes. was also there and he ah, tells me. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So now I'll take a few questions from the participants who have written in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. First question is, uh, they want to know about the administration of phages, especially mm -hmm. for infections such as urological infections or lung infections. So how mm -hmm. have you been doing phages? Yeah, so again, I mentioned that there are different medicinal forms, yes. Uh, so we are using um, uh, phages for lung infection by nebulizer nebulizing and like a spray we are using phages uh, of course orally with the local uh, local application we have suppository we are producing phages in suppository for gynecological problems for intestinal problems as well also we are producing phages and cream for the local application for the skin and soft tissues infections Currently, we do not use phages intravenously because we do not have the uh, permission from the, uh, because we do not have the conditions, appropriate conditions for the production, but it, it is our next step to do it. So currently, we do not use it intravenously. So when your route of administration is different, does the titer of phages also differ depending upon which route you are administering? Uh, no, no. Titer is, should be the special titer for the therapeutic phage. It's 10 to 6, 10 to 5, so it depends on phage. But the titer is not depending on the rules of uh, application, no. So uh, here's Adamu, uh, Adamu Kaki Kabo Ahmad. He wants to know if Dr. Bazia is open to collaboration with phage researchers in low and middle income company, countries. Absolutely, absolutely. With pleasure. pleasure. You have our website. You can just uh, find us. Uh, there are all kind of contact information on our website, eliawainstitute.org. And two questions, uh, two, two people are asking the same question, Dr. Ankush Gupta and Dr. Mohsin Raza. Uh, whether you are uh, using mycobacterial phages for TB in Iliava, has it been attempted any time? No, we never worked on mycobacterium, never. Uh, so previously there was that we have the very nice uh, institute of uh, TB institute here. So uh, we never worked on this pathogen before, and now they are very uh, nice works from the US. And uh, I don't think we have to repeat the same. So they're a uh, very nice uh, team of scientists uh, with the uh, Graham Hatful, who is working wonderful work in this direction. We are not working on mycobacterium. Uh, another question is, is there any possibility of emergence of genetic mutation in bacteria due to phage administration? Um, genetic on, mutation, I'm sorry? Mutation in the pathogen uh, on receiving phage therapy. Once you administer phages and the interaction, does it cause any kind of mutation? No, it does not cause because we are using, again, the phages which are extremely uh, expressing the lytic Lytic uh, cycle, uh, living cycles. In any uh, cases, they are killing bacteria. So they are not changing genetic mechanism of host bacteria, but they are just killing them. So there is no probability to for the genetic uh, transformation uh, using uh, via phage, which we are using for treatment. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Saujos wants to know, uh, that once we test after doing the phage susceptibility test, we mm -hmm. identify the lytic phages. So, what are the reasons which uh, for the failures in some patients and su success in others? If same set of preparation goes into different patients, this is very nice question. Actually, very interesting. Of course, uh, the high efficacy depends on the down selection because we are down selecting the uh, people patients where we have active bacteriophage to use, yes, this is first. The second, uh, sometimes there are a lot of, um, uh, how to say, provocative uh, conditions in the body, uh, which, are, uh, which is affecting the uh, 
uh, phage action. Um, so I cannot exactly tell you what kind of uh, properties um, uh, they are affecting the efficacy, but uh, these patients are mostly the genetic with the genetic disorders. Uh, for example, with the CF, you never know what's going on there. You can diminish the uh, concentration of bacteria, but then there are other uh, criteria which are uh, which is uh, also acting. So. No, but uh, the when we, you have a, a number of percentage of the less uh, responsive to the phages in the uh, very light threatening or genetic disorders or with the diabetics, for example, diabetic ulcer, for example, you do not have one hundred percent of the recovery, you know, because there are other diabetes is very. Uh, how to say very um, the, the the state which is itself affecting the healing per, per, per process you know so it is not 100 percent it's very much depends on the uh, on the disease on the health status or immunity of the per, uh, patient etc etc right thank you for that uh, i can't uh, very understand i can't really understand uh tessa are you here uh, if you're here, we can unmute you. Uh, your question is on individualized therapy and regarding what happens during those six to eight weeks. So if you would like to ask this question, we can unmute you. In the meantime, I'll ask this question from Joseph Michael and Nisha, <coughs> both of Nisha Rathor, both have this question on how to store phages for long-term usages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can use it uh, in different, of course, on minus 70, minus 80 percent, uh, minus uh, temp temperature degrees and the special, uh, special media or glycerol. Uh, and this Deepshika Jane wants to know, how does one decide the doses and route of administration? Uh, so perhaps... She, Dr. Mazia has already covered this, but if you'd like to add a little more on this. How... Yeah, actually, it's very difficult to standardize, but for some diseases, it's already standardized. But in some diseases, when we have personalized approach and we are using customized preparation, um, and it's it's based on the experience of many years. So, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Nothing can replace the experience. Uh, and also, can they be used in patients uh, on chemotherapy in case they catch any infection? So, of maybe... course, of course, we had several cases like that. Yeah, especially in the immunocompromised patients, the phages are very effective to use because uh, they they are not toxic, they are not allergic. I mean, there are a lot of uh, specificities which are absolutely easy to use. Yeah. Uh, so Prince Kumar saying, "Hi, ma'am. Nice talk. I have a question. How can o how can we overcome phage resistance, which develops that rapidly?" So <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't develop rapidly, actually. So if you are using the quite lytic uh, um, phage, and uh, uh, in our cases, for example, when we have the phage product and we are working on the phage product we are trying to and we're studying the formation uh, dynamic of formation of phage resistance so our phage products have the quite a low frequency 10 to minus 5 10 to minus 6 uh, of course resistance can be developed when you are using monophage sometimes the uh, uh, mixture of phages but it's uh, after long application um, and then uh, what you can use, I mean, you first of all, you can change the active phage with the other phage, or also you can use the mixture of the same type of phages, but different phages. It also excludes the resistance. Thank you. Uh, Gunar, uh, Gunaraj from Nepal wants to know uh, if you, you, besides natural phages, do you use engineered phages also ever in your We are not working on genetically engineered phages, only natural. Okay. And have you worked with uh, Lalit Mohan wants to know have you, uh, has your institute worked on uh, Acinetobacter bomini? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have in our collection, we have been. Uh, treated patients with the Sinatobacter biomaniphages. Yeah, yeah. 
There's another question on this by Nisha. Um, can you <clears throat> identify if the phage is purely lytic without whole genome sequencing? Yes. Yes, there's special methodology for that. Yeah. Okay. So that is something like, is it all there in public domain or is it specific to your... Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a special methodology which is described, and without tech, uh, without sequencing, you can have the lytic page. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is one question on brucella phages. Have do you have phages against brucella, and what's the best source to isolate phages for, against brucella? Oh, this is an interesting question. Of course, the uh, the environment which is near the farms. Uh, you know, they all our source of our uh, phages, which we have been, and we have quite a nice collection of Brucella phages. Uh, it was isolated from the environmental near the uh, animal farms. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, are there any incidences of bacteriophages isolated from whey, the whey protein? So in curd, you have that whey, that liquid thing. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. It's way W H E Y. Okay. So, have you ever isolated phages from? Ah, no, 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 we don't. We don't. We have not. Yeah. That is from Shivi. Uh, Doctor Gopalnath wants to know: maybe may it be immunosuppressed states of the patient because neither antibiotics nor phages eradicate the bacteria completely. So, what, why does that happen? If you find. I'm sorry. Can you repeat it to me? I think, uh, what is it, uh, Dr. Kopala, would you like to ask this question yourself? What he's trying to ask is, when is it that neither the phages nor antibiotics are able to eradicate the bacteria completely? Yeah, of course, there are cases where you do not have complete eradication. I mentioned it even with the surgical, uh, surgical infections, because uh, we just had the very interesting, uh, we are in the process of the observational clinical studies on the wound infections. And in uh, most of the cases, we do not have complete eradication, but um, you know, the, uh, uh, but the state of the wounds are much better, and finally they uh, they heal. But they would need more uh, duration, longer duration of phage application. So of course we you have cases when there is not uh, complete eradication uh, uh, of the bacteria. Yeah. Okay. The last two questions. Uh, one is from Tosif Ahmed. And he was, do you have time? Can we take the questions? I know. <laughs> yes, last one, please. <laughs> this is yeah. about, again, the composition. Maybe then I'll change the question because this has been taken. Um, there is one from uh, uh, Ubedur Erman, and he wants to know, uh, why not bacteria at the site of infection? Uh, as we hear that, which, okay, I can't understand the question. So Ubed, if you want to speak, we can let you speak, please. Um, and so, okay, this is also a good question. Gulam Sayed wants to know, how does the phage therapy affect the local microbiota? Uh, yeah, this is very Hello. interesting. Uh, yeah. Yes, Ubed, you can ask your question. Yes. Thank you so much. It was an excellent presentation. And thank you to all the organizers. Uh, my question is about the phages. That uh, at the site of infection, uh, there are a lot of bacteria. And we are hearing that there with bacteria, there is a pages. So why not dead pages killing the bacteria at the site? I'm sorry, can you repeat why your question? My question is that we are hearing that with bacteria, there must be at a specific page with it at site. So if there is an infection in the body somewhere, there must be bacteria. So why not with dead bacteria, there is a specific page with it? So why not? In, why is why does the human body not have phages specific to the bacteria that is causing disease? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, yeah, the phages are part of the normal micro microflora. So we have bacteria and also phages. But yes. uh, yeah, you know, but uh, sometimes we don't know the role of the phages in our microbiota, but this is different uh, question. So uh, 
when we have the pathogen, it is not the part of our uh, body. Yes, the very when it is uh, some some uh, there is a, some source of infection, there is some bacterial infection, but the pathogen is different. It is not the from our body, and it is the less possibility that we should have. Maybe we have the corresponding bacteriophage against this pathogenic bacteria, but it is not enough for <laughs> to struggle or to fight. So we should select specific bacteriophages against this pathogen. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, can I ask one question, Dr. Urmi? Yes, please. Can I ask one question? Okay. That's the last question from you, sir. Please go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, this is the last question. Um, you said majority of the cases you are getting from uh, other countries are chronic infections. So generally the chronic infections are biofilm based. So do you have a special approach to treat uh, these biofilm mediated infections? This is my one question. The second is you said gynecological conditions, which are the gynecological conditions which have been treated with phages? Okay, thank you for questions. Uh, with the biofilms, yes, the most of the cases, whether it be cystic fibrosis, the lung disease, or even the wounds, they are associated with the biofilm. So we are using some conventional treatment to get the with the uh, with the phages. You know, sometimes they are um, enzymes. Uh, so conventional treatment plus phages. The second question was, I'm sorry, for what? Gynecological conditions. Ah, gynecological. It's a bacterial vag vaginitis. Uh, mm. Sometimes, yes, which are causing uh, caused by enterococci or sometimes stuff. So different E. coli main, mainly. So uh, we, are, uh, we are dealing with this uh, with these complications. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first question, you said you are using enzymes with phages. So is it the depolymerase you are using with phages? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the polypides, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dr. Ankush has a question. Uh, intracellular pathogens. So do you have any intracellular pathogens you have targeted for, with your phages? No, we are not. I mentioned no, no. You cannot use it for treatment. It's only for diagnostic purposes, like Brucella, for example. All right. Yes. So that's such a wonderful session. Thank you so much. I think everybody got their answers and it was a wonderful evening. And I really thank you on behalf of all of us here for being here. And I know you're hard pressed for time, but thank you very much indeed. And I thank all the organizers. This was the last of the series. We had sessions. So this is the fifth and the last. So we started on Thanksgiving, I think. And now it's the Christmas weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. So happy Christmas and uh, New Year's to you and everybody here. And I thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was great pleasure for me. And uh, again, I would love to face-to-face you know, -face meeting with all of you. And uh, so I, I hope that the interest uh, is increasing it, uh, which is really very, uh, I'm very happy for that. And the more and more scientists and doctors are interested in phages, especially in your country. Thank you very much once again. And thank I you. wish all my European and American uh, uh, colleagues with the happy uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for everybody. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor. Thank, Thank you. It was Thank wonderful you. having you. Thank and you. Merry Christmas to you and to your team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Anika, bye bye. Thank you, Urmi. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for wonderful. It was wonderful, up. and uh, I must, uh, you know, congratulate you that you really generated a lot of interest in everyone's mind, and yeah. uh, I'm sure uh, this will be opening a new era in the new year for us to start using free. Like Friday weekend and this kind of attendance is really really nice. Yeah, and, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Gopalnath is the leader, uh, and I'm. सर आप म्यूट पे हैं डॉक्टर गोपाल आप योर ऑन म्यूट आई थिंक डॉक्टर रमा चौधरी गॉट डिसकनेक्टेड हेलो यस डॉक्टर मी इट वाज रियली अ बन ह्यूज कॉन्फिडेंस बिल्डिंग फॉर अस आफ्टर दिस लेक्चर एंड आई पर्सनली फील दैट वी आर नॉट फार बिहाइंड फ्रॉम देम 
we have got many concept quite clear which can be used in india and we are doing also we have used the iv injections also and also we are working on the mycobacteria dr ankush is working in my lab also we are working so maybe we can take lead one day if uh, all of us are having working all together so this this lecture was really great and we came to know that what iliava is doing actually so after listening her it was really a great confidence building to us thank you very much this series won't have been complete without her because they have been doing yeah, yeah. sure 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 so somebody was telling that why not you are visiting eliava but uh, you brought the eliava before us thank you very much. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah that was such a nice talk yeah so yeah. one one thing came to the forefront that uh, you don't have to use 10 to the power 10 phages for treatment yeah it is 10 to the power 5 6 which is very effective second thing is that uh, you have to have that growth curve before with the pathogen most uh, representative pathogens from the group and whether these phages individually are doing uh, are uh, killing the pathogen in first place and if that is a mixture that is the best thing and can we get the uh, patent protect those phages so that we can commercialize them because uh, it is very difficult it is very difficult for us to be uh, producing it on a large scale this is this is the biggest challenge which i feel and uh, if there are genetic mutations that we can introduce we can definitely definitely get the patent for those phages and uh, we have to have a large variety typing is very important against different receptors right. of the bacteria so Yes. Mm. So, so engineered phages can have mm. have potential for uh, patent. Yeah. You know, uh, cocktail of phages also. Yeah, yeah. So this was very interesting talk. A very nice initiative from you, and uh, it has given us such a nice information. I have taken notes from all the lectures. <laughs> so no, thank you, Doctor Ramesh. For everyone, you can always go back and see the. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we are watching repeatedly all those yeah. yeah 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 they are very informative thank you so much it's the purpose is solved yeah yeah so the credit goes to dr urbe are nahi no sir i, I was just great. you did great job and you have to do mm-hmm. in future also we have we have done this but this was exclusively for physicians so that uh... yeah 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 okay okay thank you swati okay thank you thank you very much Okay, bye. bye. Okay, Pratik, you have to say something. Is we have a representation from Open Source Pharma. I think you've come at. Perhaps you were here, but people are leaving now. Yeah, no, I've been. Yeah, no, I've been here. It was. It was a. It was a very great. Look, I haven't been able to attend any of the prior ones, but this was actually really oh. good, and I attended all of it. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm Pratik. I'm. I'm from the Open Source Pharma Foundation. This is Oxford. He's yeah. also in Oxford. Dr. Indrani is also in Oxford, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Indrani. I actually just wrote your message on uh, on Zoom uh, because I'm also in Oxford and spending a year here. And if you're around, then we can definitely meet and chat about this. I'm here on mute. You are on mute, ma'am. Can mute me. You are muted, Dr. Indrani. If you're speaking something. Yeah, now I can. I they the okay. host had to unmute, unmute me. Oh, anyway, okay, okay, are you okay. at the Oxford Innovation Cluster at the moment, or something like that? Uh, no, I'm at the I'm I'm at the Nafi Department of Medicine. Basically, I'm 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 doing a master's here in tropical medicine. Oh, wonderful! So wonderful. Here, here. In fact, I was looking for one question. It is a researchable question, but of course, it's good for our own group to listen to it. See in intracellular bacteria. See all the success that they talk about phages is better when it is in combination with antibiotics, right? So many times, many people have mentioned that. But in the case of intracellular, I think some poor forming molecules, which do not actually lyse that cell, you know, intracellular, uh, it lyses the bacteria within, but without damaging the cell. that probably would be very important because i did some experiments and i found that when there are some poor forming enzymes they allow the bacteriophage to enter and then bring about the killing when i've been looking at some intracellular bacteria and the effects so 
I mean, it's a researchable topic, what molecule would be best acting, um, allowing the penetration of the phage within you into a eukaryotic cell. That would be actually something to look at. What kind of molecules? I was working with one molecule, but there would be option for many other, which means the enzyme, just like in biofilms, they talk about, you know, enzyme combination. Here also, an approach of using enzybiotic with the phage might prove to be better for intracellular organisms. <laughs> anyway, it was excellent with me. Thanks, Fog. <laughs> So my well. okay, I, I'm glad, but of course, the, it looks as if it is not going to be so easily accepted for regular uh, usage unless ethically it gets approved in a big way at individual levels. Like it's capable where you have no other way to address, you know, a problem. Then because. The problems associated are so many, right, from the kind of preparation to the kind of purification. So this would all be very, very serious matter because should there be a legal, you know, challenge to it because some untoward reaction took place. It's almost like, you know, when uh, they are looking about uh, allergies that develop due to a drug. So hospitals are all the time looking at it, you know as drug reactions. So pharmacy practice people are there, you know, located in all the hospital. So that would be the kind of situation here as well. So, I mean, you, I don't think there would be a time when there would be something available right away in a pharmacy shop saying this phage can be used for this condition or something, you know. It is going to be all the time that researchers or laboratories have to be associated, like the one where she is working. You know, that like that, it has to be every institute or every place where they want to have. It will have to be very selected places where it happens, if and when it happens. For me, it has been easier because I've been working with environmental aspects, animal diseases, and all. So it's okay. But for human, there would be many challenges of this sort. But it's it's a great experience. <laughs> if anyone who is suffering from chronic ailments would be benefited, they would be very happy. You know? Yeah, like Belgium has started with magistral preparation, and they are available in pharmacy. So it's it's available. So it's been going on for like five years. So they are, I think, saying if the GMP is not really required because of the kind of preparation that is needed, and of course, a preparation will require a quality control. But yes, if it goes bad, it can. Just yeah. no, I've been. It's with the uh, University of Ghent that the particular group has been working. I've been talking to them also, but again, everywhere it's for the terminal stages, you know, where you have nothing else that can be used because of the ifs and buts associated with phage therapy. Right. I mean, it it need it needs to be definitely get popularized, but in other sectors, especially for local application and uh, maybe oral, that should be really the best thing possible for local application, you know. Yes. Now I'm even more confident of publishing all the success that we had with local applications of conditions that could not be resolved at all after hearing. But ethical committees have always come in the way of allowing it to be published. But there is future for that. But regarding intravenous, there would always be, of course, that big uh, fear. You know? And of course, the perfect predictor is the that book really explains for Snitobacter bomini and a person after a week of coma comes out of it. And that is amazing. You know, I'm sure all in the group have read that book. You know? Dr. Gopalnath in his last talk, he mentioned about his case where he administered uh, IV only and a Guntur patient. It's a very uh, high profile. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. That was very good. Only you can, uh, this thing would be, see, the load of organisms would decide the amount of endotoxin that would be there. So whether you add less or more, because if the load is high, phage administration, you may add very little phage. You may add very little, 10 microliter or even less than that. But then because the appropriate organism is there, the quantity that would multiply and affect more and more would also increase, you know. So you see, externally, yes, when you prepare a phage, for a gram-negative organism, you are using method. He suggested some of the best dialysis tubing methods, you know, that can be used 
to have it rid of uh, endotoxin. But in a body, if there is gram negative, problem, I would really be nervous about the endotoxin shock, you know, because disseminated intravascular hemorrhages, if they start happening, then we know those who are now working in the medical field, what are all the concerns that would happen? Because even a little bit of endotoxin in an IV fluid, like glucosaline, or, you know, results in terrible uh, pyrogenic reactions. So maybe all that will have to really become very, very interesting. Whether less or more phage is another question because if the load of microorganism is more, then naturally the endotoxic shock has to be expected. You know, So these questions will come up, of course, from clinicians as well, you know, and uh, topical, yes, this would be the best way to trauma injuries and all. But do you not ex expect this kind of toxic shock uh, with the bactericidal antibiotics also? If the load is there and the antibiotics are cidal in nature, they can cause the same kind of damage, uh, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's a very valid point. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, it happens with antibiotics as well. That's why I think the load of organisms, usually septic shock yes. when it happens or endotoxic shock, it is not really the state at which antibiotics are being used. But here what will happen is it will be very rapid. The action of phage will be very rapid. See, it's almost like the life cycle of a bacteria itself, the latent phase, stationary phase and all that we talk. I mean, log phase. It, the cycle of the phage will be exactly like the bacterial this thing cycle. So if there is a load of organism in the body already, um, administering phages will allow a lot of them to be like attacked in, uh, and suddenly lysed. You know? Right. The lysis may be very rapid. I'm just, I'm just thinking. That's all. What tiger to use? Yeah, that will be very important. However, less phages you use, but the quantum of organisms will decide the endotoxic shock because they will attack within, say, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, that cycle happens. No? And the highest titers usually for phages is usually in five to six hours. With most of the phages that we studied, the maximum title of 10 to the power 11 to 10 to the 12 is attained by five to six hours. Of course, with the generation time of the bacteria kept in mind, mycobacterium would be different. But for many others, like uh, say Vibrios with which we work, and uh, also organisms like uh, E. coli, usually in the range of nine minutes to fifteen minutes, it happens very fast. You know, the titer, and then of course the titer falls when it attaches to all of the. Uh, debris that gen that is generated by the lysis. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's <laughs> this well, part of the this part of the meeting is getting even more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for generating that interest. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you everyone. I think and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you, Swati. I hope you got a chance to get your answers. So, Swati, is uh, just yes, thank you. Right. And my yeah. Oxford friend, I hope I can see him sometime when I'm in Oxford. <laughs> Are you at the university here? Are you at the university uh, hospital? Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm at the, um, uh, the field department of medicine. So I'm, I'm not the Radcliffe, but I'm in the city center actually near the, near the museum. Radcliffe, huh? At Radcliffe? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. your name? If What's you can, your name? If you can, if, um, my, my name is Prati Garg. If you can like, send me your email, maybe in the chat, that could be okay. I just sent you a text on the chat here if that works. But otherwise, I'll, I'll find you and like I'll write to you. <laughs> okay, <Thank> great. <laughs> thank you, Urmi, and thank you. Thanks to all your group members who have made such a, you know, I don't know what word to use, the correct English word. Exciting, I should say, a session possible, okay? Yeah. And I will be sending you a mail soon, okay, Urmi? Yeah. That is regarding our Virocon meet. Okay? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Finally. All and thank you, Ritu, so much. And thank you, Kanika. Ritu, I don't know if she's here, but yeah, thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Work for you also. Oh, well, I thank you see. very much. I really enjoyed this series. Um, it's my first exposure to bacteriophages. Uh, 
and I'm interested in the field suddenly. <laughs> so thanks. Thank you so much. Really appreciate. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Have a bye, good day. Bye, all of you. Bye. Happy Christmas and a bye. wonderful new year. Okay. Wonderful okay. new year. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye. Thank you.